So today we're going to be talking about rational functions. We're going to get back to that graphing idea. Um, if you recall, when I was talking about asymptotes before yesterday, uh, I was talking about how the asymptotes are used to help you make a framework for making your graph. So today, as we go through and we start looking for rational functions, rational because think ratio, like a fraction ratio. Um, so the rational functions, when we begin to graph them, they don't all have like a nice parabolic shape that's perfect like that. They don't all have uh, like the specific things you're looking for. So those variations can be accounted for by some rules. So we're going to look at the rules today. We do need to keep them in mind every time you have a ratio, you have a fraction, you can't have a zero in the denominator. You have been fantastic about pointing that out, so we're going to keep on with that. So we'll start off by just taking a look at some graphs that are in front of you right now of some rational functions. This one specifically has a little bit of a strange shape to it that you're not used to seeing. But it is a rational function. It's got um, it's got a, a, a function in the top and a function in the bottom, and then you can work that out. This one also is a very interesting rational function. It looks almost like a line. If we really think about it, you can cancel out, right? So if we think about canceling out the x plus 2s, which is actually where we're going in simplifying equations just a little bit down the road here. If we canceled these out, you would really have y equals x plus 3. So y-intercept of 3, up 1, over 1, just like you're used to for linear functions. But this one has a hole in it. Can anybody tell me why do you think this graph, what's up with the hole? Marcus? Because x can't equal negative 2. Good, because x can't equal negative 2. It would be easy to figure out what would fill up that hole. Uh, but since it started out being this function and we can't have 0 in the denominator, this graph ends up being linear with a hole in it. This graph looks very familiar as far as what we had done before. But there's something else going on with it. It's not just a matter of a simple number in the numerator and something changing the denominator. We've got other things going on. So we have a basic framework for this graph that we can talk about uh, once we get into it a little bit more. What we also have to talk about is a new little bit of vocabulary dealing with the words continuous and discontinuous. Okay, a continuous graph is when you can draw the whole graph without picking up your pencil. It continues on and on and on. You don't have to pick up your pencil. You can keep on going with it. So this one's continuous. This one's discontinuous because there is a spot where you have to pick up and jump over and move on. And this one's another type of discontinuous. Because you could start over here and go on and on and on and on and on and on, but to get the rest of the graph, you have to take a jump and, and bring it to a new place. So the graphs can be labeled continuous or discontinuous if there's a gap. Now, there is a difference between this type of discontinuous and this type of discontinuous. That should be a little bit obvious. This one, we could easily fill out, figure out what will plug the hole. This one, there's not really a hole to plug in. And in either case, though, the place where it's discontinuous is called a point of discontinuity, even if it's not just a point. And so over here, two is our place where you'd have to pick up your pencil. And here, it, negative two is where you'd have to pick up your pencil. Right, and uh, I'll let you write that down. So we can also think about the domains again, the domains of these functions. 
the domain, all the things that X is allowed to be. Okay, so the domain here is allowed to be anything. Any X value you would plug in would give you a Y value. So our domain is all the real numbers. Here, once again, the point of discontinuity is going to tell you also what the problem is. Our domain can be anything except negative two. So all the possible X values are everything except negative two. And then the domain here, any X value will work except for X equals two. Once again, because zeros in the denominator, you just can't have that. You can't divide by zero. So that rule comes through all the way from way, 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 way back, back when. And then here's, here's the other thing that we need to consider. Um, the points of discontinuity will be either removable or unremovable. Remember I said we could very easily figure out what we can plug up this hole with. If it is just a hole that could be filled in pretty easily, we call that a removable point of discontinuity. Negative two, one would fill in this hole. So it's something that's removable because you could put a plug in it and you could fill it up. This one is a non-removable point of discontinuity because there's nothing that you could just do to fill that in nice and conveniently. It's, it's a whole line that you can't go across. It's, it's discontinuous and it's just non-removable. You can't get rid of it easily. So quite a few little vocabulary things going on today. Uh, most of what we're going to do right now deals with the idea of these graphs and getting some ideas of what you would find in the graphs, but we're not really doing the graphs themselves so much today. Just talking about what you should know about the graph. What you should know whether they are, um, whether there's a point of discontinuity or whether there is not a point of discontinuity. Just from looking at this, how do you think you can tell if there is a point of discontinuity or not? Chris? If it's an open circle on the graph, but pretend you didn't see the graph. So that's a great answer, but it, not seeing the graph, just seeing these, Pam, what do you think? So X cannot be two. Yes, that's correct. And Tim, why? Okay, so that's great as far as saying how removable versus non-removable. Excellent. Just so that we can review that. Um, but how can we tell without actually making the graph what, whether or not it was going to be continuous or discontinuous? Anybody, any thoughts on that? Well, if there's a denominator, then there probably will be, unless there's a certain case like the square where it obviously can't be zero because anything squared is going to be a positive number. Okay, good. So he's absolutely right. You're looking for where, if there's a place where the denominator would fail. Okay, so I like the way you said that, Marcus. You're looking for things like this one. There's nothing that would make this into a zero denominator because all your numbers, as long as we stay in the real number system, and that's where we are for these, um, there's nothing you could plug in here that's going to give you an, uh, a zero. But here and here, we do have something that would give you a zero. So you know that it's some kind of discontinuous anyway, just by taking a look at the denominators. Okay, so hold those thoughts, and we're going to do some analysis of these other ones that are on those sheets that I just gave you. All right, so... 
sometimes you have to do a little bit of a work before you can actually begin to and figure these things out. Okay, so for example, on here, it's kind of hard to tell any of these things unless you factor this. So let's get back to the factoring idea, okay? We wanna factor this denominator out so we can tell some things. Okay, so, so thank you for pointing out x minus 3 times x minus 1, Alex, is our denominator once you factor it. So hopefully you could very easily see from there that our domain then is set up so that x can't be 3 and x can't be 1. x can't be 3 and x can't be 1. Yes. Uh, we'll take care of that later. All right. So we want to also think about this point of discontinuity. Okay. Remember, a point of discontinuity is, is anywhere it falls apart in the denominator. There may be more than one. So does anybody know a point or points of discontinuity? X equals three is one point of discontinuity. And can I get somebody else to find another point of discontinuity? Okay. X equals one, good. So X equals one, X equals three. Those are our points of discontinuity. So you can put an S in there. There are two of them in that case. And then we can consider this idea of whether they're removable or they're not removable points of discontinuity. Okay. Think about the graph that, think about the graphs that we looked at a minute ago. Okay, you had graphs where we had one that came out and one that didn't. I'm just gonna jump right back up to those, okay? Notice our removable one was when you could cancel uh, cancel out. And our non-removable one was when it didn't cancel out. So back to where we were. Oops. Removable or non-removable points of discontinuity. I think Bryce, your hand was up earlier first. Oh, um, I was gonna say non-removable. Okay, non Okay, good. And that follows our pattern before. What you need to write into your notes is they are non-removable and they're only going to be removable if the factor is in the numerator and the denominator and they can cancel out. When you have a factor that's just in the denominator, instead of being um, a removable one or a hole in the graph, it's going to be non-removable and it's going to generate an asymptote. Okay, so that's so be thinking about those type, type of things. The non-removable ones will generate asymptotes, and the removable ones are going to generate holes. Right, we do need to, in all these, we need to figure out the x-intercepts, and we need to figure out y-intercepts. So think for a minute. When you have an x-intercept, when you have an x-intercept, you have an ordered pair, and it's going to cross. Uh, it's going to cross the x-axis. So, what part of the ordered pair do you know for every x-intercept? Like what? Um, you know, definitely a number for an x-intercept. Okay, if I put a point there, which part of an ordered pair do you know? Do you know the x part or the y part? 
the y part is going to be what number? Zero. Okay, so the y part is going to be zero for an x-intercept. So if we think about this, and we want y to end up being zero, any ideas how we can figure out in a pretty simple way what number is going to give us y being zero in this particular scenario? Plug, Plug what in? Plug in a zero. To the y. To the y. What happens to this stuff down here if you try to solve for x if we plug in a zero for the y? We've got a division. How do you undo division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So if we multiplied zero times this whole thing, what do you get? Zero. So that means zero just equals what? Zero, zero equals x plus three, so that x equals negative three. So really the denominator in this case, you can ignore it, okay? You can ignore that denominator to figure out your x-intercept. Zero equals x plus three because that denominator would cancel out anyway. You can also think of it this way. Think about zero over anything is going to give you zero as long as it didn't fall apart in the denominator, as long as you didn't have a zero down in the denominator, you're good. All right, so our x-intercept is negative three, zero. Our y-intercept, you've been finding y-intercepts more often. Uh, who remembers how you find a y-intercept? Plug, plug, plug the x's in as zero. So this would be even, you can even do a little bit of mental plugging in here. The three over negative three times negative one because zero and zero and zero. And so some of you will just be able to solve that mentally, but it's always safer to plug in and see what your work is. Uh, who's, got, who's got the y-intercept figured out then? Zero, one, yes. And here's the work for that. Plug in zero plus three, zero minus three, zero minus one, three over three is one. So once again, finding the x-intercept, you let y equal zero. To find the y-intercept, you let x equal zero. You plug it in and you fill out, figure out all those things. Okay, so the, this information is going to be key to finding out your graphing scenarios when we get into the graphing. Uh, it gives you a framework, what to expect, how to get the general shape of a graph. We're not quite doing that yet, but these are all the questions that you need to be able to answer about your um, equations like this. So we're gonna take a look at the next one. Uh, we wanna do a little analyzing on this one thinking it through and you will get to do one on your own in a minute but I just want to think through this one it's a slightly different scenario what are we thinking about as far as the domain goes what x is allowed to be um Corey what are you thinking for domain for this Well, greater than zero will work. How about zero? Corey, if I plug in zero, will that work? Yeah. How about if I plug in a negative number? Yeah, yeah it'll work. So that all would mean numbers. all real numbers. Good. Everything works. So everything works in this. So our domain is all real numbers. So we can think about that. Okay because no x is going to make it zero. So we have the domain being all real numbers. What about point of discontinuity? Okay, I'm seeing some of you shaking your heads and making a face. So that's because there's no point of discontinuity. There's nothing that makes it fall apart. So I'm glad that bothered you. Those that it bothered, there's no point of discontinuity. 
So since there's no point of discontinuity, what about this question? Nothing makes no sense because there's no point to even think about. We need to calculate an x-intercept. So how do we calculate an x-intercept? Alex, how do you calculate an x-intercept? It's when the numerator is zero, good. So if the numerator is zero, x equals five, x equals five. Zero equals x minus five, the numerator is zero, and that's gonna give us zero over something, even if you don't calculate the something, zero equals our y. So our x-intercept is five, zero, and our y-intercept, our y-intercept, plug in zero for all the x's. Okay, we got it. Zero, negative five, good. And here's what she did, plugged it in. Zero, negative five. So you've got some key things that you can all do for graphing without too much pain and anguish, figuring these things out. And so what I'd like you to do, you have another one that's next. I want you to take a minute and I want you to work on that. Independently, we'll put the uh, recorder on pause while you do that. All right, we're gonna take a look at the answers then for this. Um, the domain, and how about, um, Anaya, can you tell me something about the domain? what it's not allowed to be? Four? Can't be four, good. So domain is anything except for four. Let's bring this up and I'll cover up a whole bunch of stuff here real quick. Okay, there we go. So X can't be four. We already have a lot of things being shown there, but that's okay. All right, so the point of discontinuity then has to be four, okay? Domain is, x can't be 4, the point of discontinuity is x equals 4. To figure out whether it's removable or not, you have to factor. So I've got removable circled here. Can somebody tell me how do I know that it's removable rather than non-removable? Yes. Good, because these could cancel out. So when they're canceling out, think of it as like, oh, the only thing that's left to graph would be this, which would make a line, there'd be a hole in it. Okay, so if, if the numerator and denominator part will cancel out, it's a removable point of discontinuity. So x minus four is in the numerator and the denominator on that. The x-intercept. Now this is one that we have to be a little bit careful. I didn't point this out before, but maybe some of you thought it through. I know we had a little discussion over here uh, in the interim as far as that goes. So for the x-intercept, we are trying to find the y's being zero, right? The y's being zero. So what are we thinking about for being the x-intercept? Any thoughts? Alex? Um, negative, one, zero. negative one, zero is the x-intercept. Now, some of you might have been thinking also about the four. Alex, you want to explain why four can't be another x-intercept? 
Good. So, so good. So you can't have four in the you can't have four down here in the denominator because that would give you zero. So if you have the two pieces, do evaluate them, but then just make sure that one of them doesn't produce a, a problem. So negative one zero is our x-intercept. It's our only x-intercept. The other one is the other one would possibly be the other option would produce a whole, so we can't have that. And then y-intercept. Um, yeah. Y-intercept, 0, 1. Um, Marcus, a second ago, I heard you explaining to somebody an easy strategy for for doing that. Can you please reiterate that? That's the original one. So if you were a factor in algorithm, Okay, because more, more will drop out, right? So that's why he likes that. He said zero and zero and zero, they drop out. Very easy, even with mental math, to do negative four over negative four, which makes one. So we like that. You can do the factored version too, which is what I have here, but use your strategies. You're always trying to find the easiest, fastest way to do this. This actually probably is a little slower um, neither one's really that difficult, but a little bit slower. Okay, we're going to move right along then and take a look at at some other rules as far as how graphing goes. Okay, so we'll take a look at this. Vertical asymptotes, okay, are found anywhere where you would have a point of discontinuity, okay, so we're taking denominator, where it doesn't cancel out. So here we don't have anything canceling out. So our vertical asymptotes are going to be at x equals 2 and x equals 3. So without actually graphing them, we can figure out our vertical asymptotes by just letting our denominator equal 0. So anything that will give you a 0 here is going to give us our vertical asymptotes as long as it wouldn't cancel out with the numerator. So we've got two and three for this one. Then I've added another problem on there that I would like you to add in. On this one, we have just a slight, you know, a little slight twist to it. We need to keep in mind that the x plus two would cancel out. So this, this, so this part will not be vertical asymptotes, but what would be the vertical asymptote on this one? The, the vertical asymptote would be x equals, well, two, but this one would cancel out, so this one doesn't x equals negative. negative three because that's the one that's going to give us um so a vertical line at negative three that'll be our vertical asymptote it would give us a zero on the denominator so would two but we have in this case a non-removable and a removable asymptote or a removable point of discontinuity to think about so the asymptotes are only uh, with the non-removable ones which would be this one Okay, so don't use x minus 2 because it's in the numerator and it's in the denominator. Wait, okay. why? Why can't you use it because it's in the... Because this one is the removable one. These make a whole. Okay? So this is a whole, not an asymptote. This one, it doesn't cancel out. It would make an asymptote. Okay. Okay? All right. One last thing. It looks like it's more complicated than it has to be, so just hang with me. Okay. Horizontal asymptotes sound more complicated, but if you have the equation lined up so that you've got it in, in standard descending order, you can tell the horizontal asymptotes by these rules. So if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote going this way would be y equals zero. 
If the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then there's no horizontal asymptote. And if the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, then you go by the, co the coefficients of the first terms and divide them out. Much easier to see than it is to explain. So we'll keep these rules here, move them right here. So in this one, degree here is one, degree here is one, they're equal to each other. So our horizontal asymptote is two over one, which gives you a two. Our degree, uh, our degree here is one, the degree here is one, they match. So our horizontal asymptote is two over one. Here, our degree here is one, our degree here is two. So M is less than N. So our horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero with no work. And here, our degree is two over the degree of one. The degree is greater, so there's no horizontal asymptote. Two over one, zero, and no horizontal asymptote. And then the last thing that you've got there is for, for us to work through is not on your paper, but here's one more to think through. Okay. So on this one, vertical asymptotes factor your denominator. Horizontal asymptote, we can take the degrees. So let's think horizontal first with the degrees. Degree one, degree two, Horizontal asymptote would be what according to zero. zero according to the rules, right? And just in the interest of time, denominator does factor. I have full confidence you could factor that denominator. Vertical, yeah, x is negative five for our vertical one because we go by denominators on that. Okay. And that is what you need to be able to do the homework and to be able to do well on this.